What's up guys? Well, we came out here today to film for the iCamper SkyCamp 2.0 rooftop tent and we ended up getting ourselves stuck pretty much right at the start of this little trail here, this OHV. So I'm gonna have to dig this one out and then use the max tracks. Hopefully that'll get us free. If you clicked on this video, you're probably interested in a rooftop tent or possibly the iCamper SkyCamp 2.0. And I have a ton of information coming your way, so stay tuned. I wanna start off this video with a little caveat that rooftop tents are not required to go overlanding, that you can absolutely do it cowboy style with a sleeping bag, a ground tent, or even a hammock. There's so many options to get out there. Now that that's out of the way, let's give you guys a little information about these tents. Rooftop tents have been around for quite some time, but they have mostly been utilized in Australia. The Aussies have to deal with giant insects, reptiles, crocodiles, and all sorts of crazy creepy crawlies, so they have opted to camp on top of their vehicle to avoid encountering those night critters. Therefore, the rooftop tent was made. We have adopted this practice here in the States for about five years now, and this might be due to social media. It seems like every outdoor enthusiast on Instagram has a rooftop tent. Rooftop tents can cost anywhere from one to $5,000. There are soft shell tents and there are hard shell tents. Soft shell tents are usually cheaper and slightly slower to set up, where hard shells are more expensive and faster to set up. You also have to take into consideration what size bed you need. You might need to fit two, three, or four people in that tent. So yes, a rooftop tent is more expensive than a ground tent, but it's significantly cheaper than an RV or an overland camper shell. Ultimately, find something that's within your budget and use it to get outside. My favorite option is the rooftop tent attached to a truck. This can help you bypass the regular camping spots via four-wheel drive and head off the beaten path to camp somewhere where most people would only get to see by backpacking there. Not to mention, dispersed camping is free. So I opted for the iCamper SkyCamp 2.0. And it is a hard shell rooftop tent. It takes us about one minute to completely set it up. And it sleeps my family of four. So my wife and I and a two year old and a four year old sleep in there comfortably with plenty of room. Albeit my wife and my kids are Filipino, but you know, a small family, but we fit in there and it's, it's very comfortable and very roomy. So first things first, if you're mounting your rooftop tent on the bed rack of your truck, you have to have a bed rack. And it's important to know what the weight capacity is. There's a dynamic load and a static load. I'm using the Putco. It's called the Putco Venture Tech. And it has the capability to use a tonneau cover and these plates on here where I can mount max tracks to get myself out of predicaments. Um, different plates and things that you can store gas with your roto packs, etc. So I'm using the Putco Venture Tech, which has a static weight load capacity of 1,000 pounds and a dynamic weight load capacity of 500 pounds, which is extremely good. Um, that's actually why I went with this rack is just because of the amount of weight that it can hold. So this is what it looks like all closed. Uh, some people ask me if this overhang bothers me. It really doesn't. I need that larger 
tent size for my family. They make the, the mini, which would fit flush, but eventually I'm, I'll get a spare tire rack. And then when the bed's down, you know, it's, it's all good. I don't mind how it looks. It kind of looks like the Chuck's wearing a backwards hat. I don't mind it. You need some sort of rack to place the tent on. If you're placing it on the roof, you have to have a roof rack. If you're placing it on the bed of your truck, on the camper shell, there's so many ways to mount it, but you do need a, some sort of rack and you need to know what the dynamic and the static weight limit is. I think to demonstrate opening it and the use of it, I'm gonna have my wife demonstrate that a five foot two, very petite Filipina can open this tent and access it with no problem. I just wanna show its ease of use. Plus she's easier on the eyes and I'm sure you guys won't mind watching her do that instead of this ugly mug. So um, yeah, can you just open it up? So this is a pretty big tent. Sometimes she has to jump on the tires to get up there. But I do want to show that it has locks here. So this tent is fully locked and no one can get into it. We have a lock here on this latch and a lock here on this latch. It's this one that says I camper. That's the Rotopex. I don't use this as a daily driver, but I am paranoid and I always keep everything locked down. So Rotopax, Max Tracks, they all have different keys. This is the correct key. Yeah, everything's locked down though. Got this one here and this one here. Just one thing to note when you're mounting things on your uh, bed rack is that these latches, you need access underneath it. This one I can do pretty easily. It's actually easier for my wife to get in on this side because this one here, you kind of have to have small fingers to reach underneath and get access to that. But those gas struts pop it open like that. And then there's a telescoping ladder that we're gonna pull out. As she hops down ever so gracefully. And then we just pull that ladder down. The tent folds out to this side. Boom, we pop that into place. There's a few windows here that we'll secure with some poles, but that's about it for the setup, guys. Super easy, super convenient. That tent is ready to go. Full king size mattress. So this is the front window. It has these two poles that hook in here. And pops up in like that. I believe this is called the rain fly. And this is polyester. You can take this part off if you don't want to use it during the summer. This thing is very well insulated with two kids sleeping in here. They're never, they're never cold. Yeah, it actually gets hot and condensation in there. So sometimes you need to take off that rain fly and just rock it with the tent itself right here. This cotton material or whatever it is. So for us, we usually just set up the front window and then the side window and then the window that's on the other side over on the other side, we usually just leave that one closed. So we're gonna show you how we normally set this up for a, a normal overnight use. So that's what it looks like set up from the outside. It took us about two minutes um, just because we we're filming and under the pressure of things, it took us a little bit longer, normally about a minute and we're done. Um, I think those windows last up to 40 miles per hour is what the limit is. Otherwise you would keep those windows closed, but it's, it, like I said, does get hot in there actually with that polyester rain fly on there. So we usually always keep these windows open as well as the skylight or the rooftop window, whatever you call the one on the top. So let's go ahead and go inside, babe, and show them the inside of this tent. Let's check it out. So one thing to keep in mind when you're setting up a rooftop tent is you wanna find a flat area to camp at. Uh, sometimes you can use blocks of wood or a max track underneath a tire just to level it out. 
The Trail Boss has a level on the gauges on the inside, so I'm constantly looking at that. When I'm at plus one or two degrees, I'm okay. I completely feel like I'm flat and I sleep really good. But yeah, you don't want to be at an angle or feel like you're laying upside down in this. So it's one thing to consider with the rooftop tent is you do need to find a level ground to sleep on. So this is what it looks like from the outside. And my favorite thing about it is this map here that shows the globe. And it's just nice to wander lust when you're camping and think of the places you want to travel. Actually, my favorite thing is the skylight or the starlight. This one right here is so cool to just lay in here, camp with the family and look up at the stars and the moon. And that's what it's all about being out under the stars so you can be up here on your rooftop tent looking up in this well insulated tent and really enjoy it ah oh, so amazing so what do you think of the mattress itself it's not bad it's um could be softer <laughs> when i read reviews um that's the number one thing that i see most complaints about this tent is the mattress I personally don't mind it. It's like a one inch, two inch memory foam and it's firm. I prefer firm, so I sleep great on it. I guess some people want a more fluffy, plush mattress, but for me, that's not my style. I actually enjoy this mattress. Um, you know, and it's a king size bed, so we usually we just bring two pillows and what do you call that? Just a, a comforter, like from home, from our own bed and we sleep very comfortable. So to answer the question, is a rooftop tent worth it? I think it's so subjective because it all depends on what your finances are. Yes, it's more expensive than a ground tent or a hammock, but it's a lot cheaper than an RV or a van. So it's kind of an in-between and it, it's, it all depends on what you wanna do. We're able to take this places that a van or RV can't go. So I feel like it's sort of the best of both worlds. We're able to travel so much further um, just explore and adventure and overland and just get out to places that you wouldn't be able to get in a normal vehicle. I think spending the, the $1,000 to $4,000, depending on whatever tent you get for your rooftop vehicle, if you plan to overland, you will not regret it. Um, we've had a ton of fun. It's definitely worth it. The other great thing about overlanding and dispersed camping is that it doesn't take months to plan a trip. We can literally set this thing up in one minute and since we don't have to go to a campground we can camp anywhere we can decide hey we're off this weekend we're feeling adventurous let's go so we'll hop in the truck and we're able to do a last minute trip and be very spontaneous and with kids that's a lot harder to do these days so this truck and this rooftop tent makes that just a little bit easier so i highly recommend a rooftop tent if it's in your budget don't go broke or don't break the bank buying a rooftop tent like i said you can always do this with a ground tent and a sleeping bag but if you can splurge for the rooftop tent, this is gonna provide you with so many adventure opportunities and you will not regret it. So hopefully you found this video informative. We post videos like this every Sunday, posting adventure content, whether that's hiking, camping, overlanding, biking, that's the type of content we do. So hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you found this video useful. Follow us on Instagram. And on that note, don't forget to get outside, stay hydrated and keep on moving. This is the definition of glamping, I would say. Not roughing it. Not roughing it.